Hey guys, today we're going to talk about building a component in Power Apps. This is part one in a series of blog posts designed to help you improve and speed up your Power Apps development. In this video, we're going to take a shot at building a simple application header component for our Power Apps. Hi, I'm Mike Bodell with Bulb Digital. And if you've worked with Power Apps at all, you've probably uh, come up with a scenario where you've created an element or a control in a particular screen and you found the need to repeat that element on another screen and so you've reverted to the good old copy and paste method. Or maybe you've even taken it a step further and you've created a gallery of controls, if you will, from which to copy and paste into other screens in your application. Well, what I want to talk to you today about is a better way to do that and that is the use of the component. So in a scenario where you have an element of your application that has a series of controls that all work together as one, uh, you want to be able to create that in a single location uh, where you can then repeatably use it and then go back to that single location and make any changes that you need to make. And you want to see those changes actually propagated throughout your application. So you don't want to have to copy and paste that same element again or that, that component. Um, and so that's what we're going to take a look at today. Let's go take a look. Okay, so let's get started creating a quick header component in our demo application. Okay, so what we have here is a simple application uh, with a couple screens. One is a simple gallery with a list of items that are coming out of SharePoint. The other screen uh, is what you'd consider an edit or a detail screen that has the details of the selected item. But what we really want to do here is we want to add a header to our application uh, on all screens. Um, and we're going to do that by creating a header component. Uh, so to do that, the first thing that you need to make sure uh, is that you actually have components enabled for your application. So to do that, you're going to go to settings, you're going to go into advanced settings, and then you're going to scroll down uh, and make sure that this is turned on. So by default, I think now they, Microsoft has this turned on across the board, but in case you don't have it turned on in your application, you'll need to turn it on here. Uh, so then you can go back into your application and uh, once you've turned that on, you will have a components tab. So right next to your screens, you'll be able to select the components tab and this is where you'll be able to actually create a new component. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to create a new component um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, rename this and we're going to call it our application header. So the very next thing that we want to do is we want to set the size for our application header. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set it with a height of 82 pixels because that should give us enough uh, room uh, for a logo and uh, maybe a title and things like that. Um, but then on, in the case of our width, we actually want to be a little bit uh, smarter about this uh, because we plan on reusing this and letting others reuse this, for example, in the future. So rather than specifying that it's going to be 640 wide, we can actually use a reference to uh, the application width. Um, by jumping into here and saying app.width. And so now this basically picked up on the width of the application. Um, and so whatever application this ends up being used in, uh, will, it will actually match itself to that. Okay, so now we're ready to actually add some content to our header. I think the first thing that we'll add will be an image to support our logo. Um, so we'll go ahead and add an image to our header, size it, for the header and then we're going to actually come up here and select an image from our gallery that we've already loaded in our application. Um, and so then now we have our nice logo. The next thing we want to add is a text label. And so we'll go ahead and add one of those to our header. We'll give it kind of a placeholder for our application name. And we'll set our font size to 18 and bold so that it becomes kind of a prominent feature. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll add an icon that we can use to exit out of the application. Um, and so we'll simply use the cancel icon and in the on select property, we're simply gonna say exit. Okay, one other little thing I forgot 
that I wanted to do here is I wanted to add some padding on my logo uh, to make that look a little bit better. So we'll add that here. And that simply fits the space a little bit better. Now that we have an application header, we actually want to add it to our screens and our application. So we'll jump back over to our view of our screens. Um, and what we want to do is we want to drop that application header on our screen. So the first thing we're going to do, we'll jump to our gallery screen. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit smaller to accommodate uh, the header that we're going to add. Uh, one thing you should note about inserting components is that you can do it from a couple different places. You have the insert menu at the top, and you also have the insert menu here on the left-hand side. Um, in both places, uh, any component that you create in your application is going to be located under the custom um, section or heading, if you will. Um, so as you can see, we have our application header here. Um, we can now just add that. It goes right where we wanted it, um, right at the top of our form, and so now we have that there. Um, so let's, let's go to our other screen, our detail screen and effectively do the same thing. So we're gonna take this form and we're gonna make this form a little bit smaller to accommodate our header. And then again, we're, we'll go ahead and add it from this insert menu this time. Uh, there's our application header. And now we have a header on both of our screens. Um, and so now if we wanted to, uh, you know, launch this application, uh, we can do so. We'll go back to our gallery screen launch our application so we can see we have a header at the top. If we dive into one of these items and look at the detail screen, our header shows up. Um, and so that's how, how that works. So now that we have a header and we've added it to our screens, what if we wanted to add some additional content to it? Or what if we wanted to change the application name, for example? Um, in the case that you had used the good old copy and paste method, you would have to go and touch every single screen um, and each label or each component within the header on every single screen. Um, or you would have to, at the very minimum, copy paste. So go fix it in your original gallery and then copy paste the entire thing uh, on every screen where you used it. So this is where the component is really uh, powerful and kind of will save you some time. So we'll jump back over to our components um, and we'll make some modifications to our application header. So let's say we finally know what our application name is gonna be. We can come in here and we can actually change that. Volco service request application. And maybe we also want to add some secondary text. Uh, so we'll add another text label, if you will. And we can add that here. And you know, maybe this text is here to really describe the purpose for the end user. So. Uh, Okay, so now that we've updated our application header component with secondary text and we've changed our application name, let's go take a look at the screens and verify what changed. So as you can see on our gallery screen, both the application name and the secondary text uh, are, have been changed and are present. Uh, and if we actually look at our detail screen, we'll see that the same change has been applied. So this is the really nice thing about components. It'll save you a lot of time. It'll save you from having to do a lot of copy and paste. Uh, so when you have elements that are kind of elements that need to you know, be together, um, that are made up of multiple elements, um, you can build those things into a component and then uh, allow that to be reusable within your application and ultimately across your organization. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about building Power Apps or components in Power Apps, feel free to post a comment below. If you want to learn more about Power Apps development, be sure to subscribe to this channel. We're going to be posting additional videos in this series. The next one is going to be all about setting global styles and branding your components. We look forward to seeing you then.